everybody's here tonight. Go ahead and take your Bibles, if you have one, to the book of Matthew. We're going to turn to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. There's a bunch of stuff up here. Let's see. Move some of this stuff out of the way. All these announcements. They'll, they'll be confused forevermore. I'm going to move all their stuff it's right out of the way. There we go. Now I get my stuff up here. Matthew chapter 16. It's been a wonderful week this week. I've certainly been glad to be here. Uh, he mentioned that I'm visiting down from South Carolina, so I'm a guest here this week. And it's been a pleasure just to get to know uh, the young people. And uh, it's, just been, it's just been a lot of fun. They've been very responsive to the preaching, and that's always a wonderful thing. And we just give God the glory for what He's been able to do this week. Looking forward to the baptismal service to follow as these young people uh, follow in, in obedience uh, to baptism since they trusted Christ as their, as their Lord and Savior. Matthew chapter 16, I want to begin reading in verse number 13. The Bible says this, When Jesus came into the coasts of Caesarea Philippi, He asked His disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Now that's a really good question, isn't it? I mean, Jesus here, he's asking uh, his disciples, he says, Hey, what do people think about me? You know, I mean, what, what are they saying out there? You know, I mean, I'm here and uh, there's been some amazing things taking place and I'm sure there's a lot of different things that are being said. Uh, what is it? What are people saying about me? Who do they say that I am? Look at verse 14 and they give their response and, and they, the disciples, said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. In verse 15, he saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Ah, what a question. Jesus here, he takes a, takes a twist on the first question, doesn't he? The first question was, hey, what do people have to say about me? And so they tell them. They tell them the different responses. And you know, uh, when you go out, and if you were to just stop and talk to people in the grocery store or, or whatever it is, and you'd walk up to them and you'd say, hey, who's Jesus? You'd hear a whole bunch of different things. Um, you might hear somebody say, well, he was one of the, the best people to, to ever live, to ever walk on the face of the earth. And somebody else might say, well, he was a great teacher. And somebody else might say, well, he was a Bible character. And Somebody else might say some, something else that they believe about Jesus. And, you know, men have a lot of different ideas. And then Jesus makes it personal. He says to his disciples, who do you, or what do you, who do you say that I am? Boy, that's a good question. That's a question that every person must answer for themselves. Amen. Every person. Who do you say that Jesus is. Just think about that for a minute. Who is Jesus to you? That's what Jesus asked his disciples. You know, when I got to thinking about this, what a wonderful question it was, I thought, you know, if, if, if I'm going to answer that question, I'd like to know who Jesus said he was. Wouldn't, doesn't that make sense? What did Jesus say about himself? Well, the book of John in your New Testament is just a marvelous book. Uh, I highly recommend everybody in here, you need to read the book of John. If you've never read the book of John, read the book of John. You can start it tonight whenever you get home. It's broken up conveniently in chapters, and you can just read through the book of John. The book of John just contains many sayings of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I want us to go there tonight, and I want us to just consider some of the things that Jesus had to say about himself. All right, so take your Bibles and turn to the book of John. We want to go to John chapter 3 and verse 16. I think it's important if we're going to answer this question, who do you, or who do you believe that Jesus is, it would be helpful to know who Jesus said that he was. So let's look at it. Very familiar verse. John chapter 3 and verse 16. We're going to go through a bunch of the book of John tonight and look at a bunch of different verses. Because I want to show you a bunch of different things that Jesus said about himself. And then I'm going to ask you the question at the end of this message, who do you say that Jesus 
exists. Okay? So that's where we're headed tonight. John chapter 3 and verse 16 says this, For God so loved the world. By the way, if you have a Bible that uh, has, re has red letters in it, the red letters are things that Jesus said. Okay? This is in red letters in my Bible, and this is something that Jesus said. Okay? Every, everything we're going to look at tonight is directly from the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? It says, Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now Jesus here, he's speaking about himself. He's standing there and he's talking to these people and he says Jesus gave his only begotten son and he's standing there and he is claiming to be the only begotten son of God. You know, I've met a lot of very interesting people. Haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> I have never met anybody that said that they were the son of God. I've just never ran into anybody like that. I don't know, maybe they're out there, right? But if you'd have run into Jesus, he'd have told you that he was the only begotten Son of God. And he didn't just stop there. He keeps going. He says, hey, whosoever believes in me will not perish. And what he means by that is whosoever believes in me will not spend an eternity in hell whenever they die. Then he goes on to say, but have everlasting life in a place called heaven. That's what he means there. I mean, this man, Jesus, he's quite a very interesting character, isn't he? He said he was the Son of God. The Bible says he's the Son of God. He said, if you believe on me, you won't go to hell. He said, if you believe on me, you'll go to heaven. That's fascinating. I've never met anybody like that. But that's what would have happened if you had run into Jesus and you had a conversation with him. Look at me in John chapter 4 and verse number 25. Uh, John chapter 4 is a story where he meets a woman who's uh, at the well and uh, begins to have a conversation with her and he begins to tell him a little bit about who he is. And in verse number 25, it says, The woman saith unto him, they're having this conversation, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. And when he, is, when he is come, he will tell us all things. Now in verse 26, Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Well, that's pretty clear, isn't it? Jesus claimed to be the promised Messiah of the Old Testament Scriptures. You know, I, I run into a lot of people and I talk to them about the Bible. And not one time ever have they told me that they were the one that was prophesied about in the Old Testament. This never happened. But yet that's what Jesus said. Jesus said all those Old Testament prophecies about the one who was going to come and be the Savior of the world and take away the sins of the world. Hey, that's me. I am the promised Messiah. I am the Son of God. You know, I have heard before and I just find it I find it rather silly, to be honest with you. I, I, I've heard people tell me that when they read the Bible, they can never find anywhere where Jesus claims to be the Son of God. Well, they must not have read even the verses that you and I have looked at tonight. Yeah. Jesus says clearly here, I am He. I am the Messiah that's been prophesied about in the Old Testament. Look in John chapter 5 and verse number 17. Jesus here, he's speaking to uh, some of the Jews, and it says in verse 17, But Jesus answered them, My Father worketh hitherto, and I work. This is a conversation about the Sabbath day, and Jesus is in trouble. Jesus is always getting in trouble with the Jewish and the, the religious elite of his day. And uh, they were complaining about the fact that he was working on the Sabbath day. And he has the nerve to say, Well, my Father, speaking of God, is working today, and so I'm working today. Boy, that's fascinating, isn't it? He claims to be able to work on the Sabbath because it's God. It, 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 God is his Father. And he's working on the Sabbath day, so he's going to work on the Sabbath day. I've never met anybody like that. I mean, this man is truly an amazing character. They were in John chapter 5. Look down in verse number 22. This is in red letters. Jesus is speaking here. He says, For the Father, speaking of God the Father, For the Father judges no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Now this is a really amazing verse. Jesus here is claiming that He is the judge of all mankind. I've met a lot of very interesting people, but I've never met anybody who claimed to be the judge of all mankind. No, He's claiming here that whenever you die, you will stand before God and give an account of your life, and it will be to Jesus Christ. That's what Jesus said about Himself. It's fascinating. It's fascinating. Look in John chapter 5, the next verse, in verse number 23. 
says that all men should honor the Son. Now who's the Son? He's talking about himself, right? He says here in verse 23 that all men should honor the Son even as they honor the Father. He that honors not the Son honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. Look, he says something very dramatic here. He says, look, you cannot honor God if you don't honor me. I've never met anybody that said something like that to me either. Who is Jesus? Is he really who he says he is? He says some pretty amazing things if you really just stop and think about it. You can't honor God unless you honor me. And by the way, I'm the only begotten Son of God. And I have the words of eternal life. Where, that was verse 23. Look at verse 24. It says, Verily, 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 just means truthfully, truthfully. Truthfully, truthfully, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. He claims to have the secret of eternal life, of being able to spend an eternity in heaven, much like he said in John 3.16. He says right here, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. Now that does not mean that we will live physically forever. Every person is going to die one day, will die physically, and he, Jesus is talking about an eternal spiritual life. You know, whenever a person dies and, and uh, we go and attend their funeral, their, their body is laying here in front of the, the church in the casket, and, and uh, somebody will say, if they trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior to forgive them of their sins, somebody will say, you know, they lived a great life, and they may talk about them, they say, today they are in heaven. They're in heaven because of the fact that they believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and paid for their sins. That's the kind of eternal life that Jesus is here speaking of. You will never, ever actually die. Look in John chapter 5 and verse 30. Jesus says here, I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. That's pretty amazing. He says, everything that I do, I do it because God told me to do it. I do what God wants me to do absolutely 100% all the time. That's an amazing statement. What an interesting person Jesus really is. If you just examine his own words and consider who Jesus said that he is. Look in verse 39 of that same chapter, chapter 5, in verse number 39. Jesus says to them, Search the Scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. That's an amazing statement. He says, look, this Bible, the Bible, the Bible that you read, is talking about me. That's what he says. It's amazing. What an amazing person Jesus Christ actually was. Look in John chapter 6 now, in verse number 38. And again, I just want to show you who Jesus says that he is. John chapter 6 and verse number 38 says, For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. Have you ever met anybody who said they came down from heaven? <laughs> you know, I never have either. You know, I mean, not even Pastor Price tells me that he came down from heaven, right? Definitely not. Definitely not. Yeah, I didn't come from heaven either. Jesus says, Hey, I came down from heaven. By the way, that is true, isn't it? According to the Bible, Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. He had an earthly birthday, but that was not his beginning. Jesus Christ is eternally existent, the same as God. He was with God whenever the world was created. By Him, all things were created. Without Him was not anything made that was made. Jesus Christ did not begin whenever He was born on the earth. Jesus Christ says here, I did not start. He says, I came from heaven. He who existed in heaven before He came to the earth. I, I've never told. You know, I've never had anybody tell me that. John chapter six. Let's see where are we at here in thirty-eight? Look in verse number forty. It says, "And this is the will of Him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on Him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day." So here's the everlasting life thing again. Okay. And then he says, look, whenever you die, at the last day, I'm going to raise you back to life. That's an amazing statement that Jesus can make here. Jesus says, I'm God. And Jesus says, if you believe on me, I will raise you back to life. 
that you can spend an eternity with me in heaven. Look in verse number 47. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Jesus said this an awful lot, did he not? If you believe on me, you have everlasting life. Look in John chapter 8 and verse number 12. John chapter 8 and verse number 12. It says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. He claimed to be the light of the world. He claimed to be absolute truth. And he claimed that his followers would not walk in darkness. Hey, listen to me, you young people that have trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior. Listen to me, adults that have trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior. Jesus is the light of the world. His followers are not to walk in darkness. They're not to walk in darkness. I just ask you this, and I'm not asking you so that you can respond, but I'm asking you so that you can self-evaluate. Do you claim to be a follower of Jesus and, and walk in darkness? Well, I'm telling you if, if you, if you do, maybe you need to do some business with the Lord. Amen. The Lord says, I am the light of the world. Light exposes darkness. I love babies. And they don't always like preaching, though, you know? And I, I, I try not to be too offended. I mean, if I was that age, I'd cry. She's so cute and adorable. Love babies. I, I guess I need to hurry up, don't I? I've worn out my welcome here. John chapter 8, look in verses 23 and verses 24. It says, And he said unto them, Jesus here, listen, listen to this, this is fascinating. Jesus says, Ye are from beneath. I am from above. That's crazy. But that's what he said. Ye are from beneath. I am from above. Ye are of this world. I am not of this world. This is what Jesus said. Jesus said, I am not of this world. But you are. And then he goes on in the next verse. And he says, I say therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins. If ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Boy, this is a powerful statement. Have you ever bumped into anybody and struck up a conversation with them and, and they told you that they were able to forgive you of the wrong things that you've done? No. No, I've, I've never run into anybody like that. If you ran into Jesus, he'd tell you something like this. You know, if you, unless you believe that I am He, that I am the Son of God, you'll die in your sins. And you'll spend eternity in hell because of me. Well, that's an amazing statement. It's an amazing statement. Jesus said a lot of things about who He is. You know, He asked His disciples, who do you say that I am? Look in John chapter 8, verses 56, 57, 58, and 59. I find this one to be fascinating. John chapter 8, verse number 56. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, or truthfully, truthfully, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Now that's an amazing statement. Now let's just uh, kind of put this in a timeline here, okay? Uh, today, this is the year 2017, okay? Jesus walked on the earth about the time it was zero, okay? Around in there. So that's, let's call that 2,000 years ago. So Jesus was alive on the earth 2,000 years ago. Abraham was alive on the earth 2,000 years before that. They... Ask him, or Jesus says, Abraham was happy to see my day. And they said, hey, you're not even 50 years old. How could you know Abraham? And he says, before Abraham was, 2,000 years before, I am. By the way, when he says, I am, he's saying, I am the eternally existent one. He claimed to be alive before Abraham. That's fascinating. I've never met anybody that was thousands of years old before. Jesus says, before Abraham was, I am. And, by the way, Abraham was happy to see my day. John chapter 14 and verse 6. This is an amazing passage. John chapter 14 and verse 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. We live 
in a world today that does not like anything about this verse right here. Okay? This is what most people want you to be able to believe. You know, it doesn't really matter which religion you believe in. As long as you're sincere, you'll end up in the same place. You know, they likened uh, religion and, and all these different things. It's kind of like a big mountain. And they're just different paths and different slopes in order to get to the same top. Jesus here in John chapter 14 and verse 6, He claims exclusivity. He says, I am the way. I am the life. I am the truth. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. It doesn't matter how sincere you are. If you're not following Jesus Christ, friends, you will not make it to heaven according to the Bible. Amen. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Now, there's all these people out there. You, like I, I talked to him before, if you went up to just people out here in Walmart, or the grocery store, or right next door here in Safeway. Is that, is that the name of the place there? Safeway. Yes. I've been to Safeway a couple of times since I've been here. Isn't that a very nice place, all right? But if you went in there and you started talking to people, all right, and you asked them who Jesus was, there'd be a lot of people, and they might say, well, he was a great person. He was a great teacher. And uh, this different thing. And he, he, he was a great leader of people. And then if you were to ask them, well, was he the Son of God? Most of the people that you talked to would say, no, he wasn't the Son of God. I mean, but it was a really great guy. I mean, one of the best people to ever live. One of the most moral people to ever live. Okay, now I have just sat here and shown you from the Scriptures the words of Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, I suggest this to you. Either Jesus Christ was who He said that He was. Either He's the Son of God, or He's the biggest liar to ever walk on the face of the earth. It's true. It's true. It's true. I cannot be the best moral person and the best moral teacher to ever walk on the face of the earth if everything that I said and claimed to be was a lie. It couldn't be. It can't be true. So either he's who he said he was or he is the biggest deceiver to ever walk on the face of the earth. He deceived everybody that he was on the earth whenever he was alive and all the people that followed him and the people who wrote the scriptures. He deceived me. He's deceived Pastor Price. Pastor Price is wasting his life trying to teach people about the Bible because obviously Jesus is the biggest liar that there ever was. If he's not who he said he was. So who's Jesus? Jesus. Who is it? There's really only two options. He's who he said he was. He's the Son of God, and he can give you eternal life, and he can forgive you of your sins. Or he's a liar. Alright? I'm going to go back to Matthew. You don't have to turn there if you don't want to. I just want to go back and kind of reread what we, where we started. Matthew chapter 16, if you want to turn there, I'll be reading in verse 13 again. Matthew chapter 16 and verse number 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, He asked His disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? We've talked about that just a little bit. Is it we went out and, and talked to people about that today? Verse 14, And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Verse 15, He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? We didn't read verse 16 earlier, but I want to read it to you now. Verse 16 says this, And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. You know what? That's the right answer. That's the right answer. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And He can forgive you of your sins, and He can give you eternal life. Now many of the people, or the young people that have been here this week, uh, many of them trusted in Jesus Christ to be their Savior. Uh, they put their faith, and they put their trust in Him to forgive them of their sins so that they can have an eternal home in heaven. And in a little while, whenever some of them get baptized, they're going to be making a public statement that they are identifying publicly that they believe that Jesus is who He said He was. And when they go and they get in that baptismal pool and they stand there, they're going to say, you know what, by standing here, I am pictorially representing to you in, in a symbolic nature the fact that Jesus died on the cross. And then they're going to take 
these young people, and they were standing here, and they're going to put them all the way under the water. They're going to immerse them. And that is a picture of the fact that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. Then he was buried. So he'd go all the way under the water. And then, I love this part of baptism. <laughs> they don't keep them there, right? That wouldn't be very pleasant for these kids, okay? What happens after they put them under the water? They stand back up. Well, what's that a picture of? That's a picture of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The fact that Jesus rose from the dead three days later, victorious over sin and victorious over hell. And that's what baptism is a picture of. Baptism doesn't save anybody. Baptism doesn't wash away anybody's sins. Baptism is just simply a picture of what's already taken place in their life. And we're going to do that here in just a few minutes. But you know what? I, I, you know, I, I don't know everybody that's here. There's a lot of people that have come uh, and your guests. And we're so excited that you're here. And I don't know where you stand spiritually. I don't know what you believe about the Son of God. And so I just want to ask you the question that was asked to Peter here tonight. Who do you say that Jesus is? Now, I used an illustration with the teenagers this week, and I'd like to show it to you too. And teenagers, I want you to pay attention and watch again, because this is such an excellent illustration that you can use anytime with anything that's laying around to share the good news of Jesus Christ with anybody you're talking to, okay? So we're going to have a little bit of make-believe fun here, all right? We're going to say that this hand is going to represent everybody in this room. This hand represents you, and this hand represents me. This hand represents all of us. Now, the Bible tells us in Romans 3.23, For all has sinned and come short of the glory of God. Okay? So we're going to let this wallet here, this black wallet, represent sin. Okay? And this is very simply what the Bible says. Here we are. Here's sin. And the Bible says that we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And you know what? If we're just honest with ourselves, that's very easy to identify. We're all sinners. We've all broken God's commandments. Okay? Now, the Bible says because of our sin, we are separated from God. And the Bible says, as we read before, Jesus said, listen, if you die without believing on me, you'll die in your sins. And if that happens, you'll perish. You'll have to go to a place called hell. So here's what the Bible says. If you die in your sins, you will die, and you will go to hell, and you will spend all of eternity there, because you did not believe on Jesus Christ and forgive your sins. Okay? Now, in response to that, a lot of people think, well, here I am, and Here's my sin, and wow, that's really bad. I've done these bad things. I need to do some good stuff to make up for that. And uh, so they'll do things like get baptized. Right? Like get baptized. Okay? Baptism doesn't save you, but it's something that you do out of obedience. And they'll say, well, you know what? I'm, I'll go to church. And uh, they'll do other things. And they say, you know what? I'm, I'm going to read my Bible. And uh, they're going to say, you know what? I'm going to give. I'm going to give money to the needy, those who are in need. And uh, you know what? I'm going to be a good parent, or I'm going to be a good kid. I'm going to be a good grandparent or whatever it is, and I'm going to do all these different good things. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with good works, is there? But you know what? Good works do not take away what? The sin. Sometimes they cover it up and make it look a little better, but the fact is, the sin is still there. All right? So here we are, and here's our sin. The Bible says we all have a sin problem. Okay? Now, the Bible says that Jesus is the Son of God. We'll let this hand represent Jesus. And the Bible says that He came from heaven. Okay? He came from heaven. He lived a perfect and sinless life. Jesus Christ had no sin. Yet Jesus Christ was crucified on a cross. Why was He crucified? Now, when He was crucified, the Bible tells us some amazing things took place. The Bible said that He bore our sin in His own body on the tree. Now, what does that mean? All right, so here's Jesus, the sinless Son of God. He came here to die for you because He loves you. Here's Jesus. He's dying on the cross. And the Bible says that God the Father reached down from heaven when He was hanging on the cross and He took your sin off of you and He took my sin off of me and He put it on to Jesus Christ. Oh, man, that's good news, isn't it? Why? Because if I was going to pay for my sin, I'd have, to, I'd have to go to hell to do it. But God took our sin off of us, and He put Him on to Jesus Christ. And then God did another unthinkable thing. God punished Jesus Christ for our sin. So Jesus Christ died in our place. He was our substitute. And the Bible says then, three days later, that Jesus rose from the grave, and now He sits at the right hand of the Father in heaven. Now, the Bible says, if we will look to Jesus, 
if we will believe that He did that for us, He'll forgive us of our sins and He'll for, He'll give us eternal life. Isn't that a good deal? Yes. I mean, that's a wonderful deal. That's the best news that a person could ever hear. And maybe you're here tonight and you've never taken that step of faith. You've never put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone to take you to heaven. A lot of people think that uh, you have to believe in Jesus and do other stuff. You have to believe in Jesus and go to church. You have to believe in Jesus and be baptized. You have to believe in Jesus and live a good life. You have to believe in Jesus and give up your sin. A lot of people think all kinds of things, but that's not what the Bible says. That's a split trust. That's trusting some in Jesus and some in you for, to live a good life. The Bible says, no, it's just what Jesus has done. And you're not saved by your own works. You're saved just by what Jesus has done. You're saved by the works of Jesus Christ and by Jesus' works alone. All right? Now, I want to just ask you the question. Who do you say that Jesus Christ is? Is He your Savior? Have you trusted in Him and Him alone to forgive you of your sin? Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? Father, I thank You so much for the opportunity to be here tonight. Lord, to just open up Your Word and uh, to consider, uh, Lord, what You had to say about Yourself. And for us, Lord, to have a little bit of self-evaluation and to ask ourselves, Lord, what do we think? Or who do we think? that you are. Father, I thank you for your word tonight. And in Jesus' name I pray. I would like you to keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed. And let me just ask this. You know, maybe there's somebody here and you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior. You've seen tonight for the first time that, that you're a sinner, that you deserve to go to hell, that good works won't save you. And you see that Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross, he was there for you. He paid for your sins. And you would like to tonight put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ. I want to give you the opportunity to do that right now. You can do it right where you sit. You just talk to God. We call it prayer. Prayer is just talking to God. And you can talk to God and you can tell Him something like this. You can say, Dear God in heaven, I've seen tonight that I'm a sinner. I see from your word tonight that because of my sin, man, I, I deserve to go to hell. Lord, I, I've also seen tonight that I can't be good enough to earn my way to heaven because good works don't take away from sin. They don't take away my sin. But Lord, tonight I, I've also seen that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross, and He paid for my sins. The I believe that He died for my sins. I believe that He rose again. And Father, right now, the best way I know how, I, I believe in Jesus Christ to forgive me of my sins. I, I call on Him to, to save me from sin and death. It's not my desire in any way to embarrass you, but I would like to pray for you tonight. If you prayed that prayer and, and you trusted Jesus Christ to be your Savior, would you just slip your hand up right where you sit and say, you know what, I trusted Jesus Christ tonight. I see that for the very first time. And... And uh, I just put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ to be my Savior. Wonderful. Yes, I see those hands. Wonderful. Anybody else? If you got your hands up, you can put it down. Anybody else tonight? Father, I thank you for these who express that they have trusted in Jesus Christ as their Savior to forgive them of their sins. Father, it's the most important and wonderful decision that they'll ever make in their life. Father, we thank you for uh, your miracle and uh, the fact that you sent your Son, Lord, that you loved us enough to send him, Lord, that he would die on the cross for our sins. Father, we thank you so much, and we love you, and we ask that you would bless the rest of this service here this evening. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Pastor, if you come. I want to first thank Brother Duke for caring about us enough to come and preach to us this week. It's been an honor and a privilege. This is the last chance we've had to hear him uh, this week, but he's... God's used him in the lives of our young people and in our church. And if you pray to trust Jesus as your Savior, uh, why don't you tell somebody afterward? Tell that Brother Duke, come tell myself, your lady, my wife would love to hear it. And when you have trusted Jesus as your Savior, uh, sometimes Christians use words that people don't understand, like saved. 
What's it mean to be saved? Well, saved from your sin. God just saved you. If you ask God to save you because of what Jesus did, the Bible says that if we ask anything according to His will, God hears us. If you ask God to receive the gift of eternal life, God saved you just now. And that's a guarantee. We can show you from the Bible where you never have to do that again. You have eternal life and that's taken care of. And so then you are born again. You are born spiritually for the first time in your life. Uh, there's no separation between you and God. You're God's child. And that today's your spiritual birthday. And so mark it down. Write it down. Record it. And uh, uh, celebrate that the rest of your life. That's the most important decision you could ever make. It happened to me. And I dare say for most of us in this room, there's been a day that we've had a spiritual birth. And we've been born again. And so praise the Lord. We're rejoicing with you. And this is a place where we can help you to grow. Uh, you may have noticed, but we're a family church. Everybody knows everybody, and we love everyone here. There's a lot of folks that aren't able to be here this evening, but they'll be here Sunday. But this is a place where you would be among people uh, that you could rub shoulders with that are going through the same things in life that you are and have the same Bible that gives us answers. And we can help you grow. We want to. Uh, we have a lot of things going on for all ages in our church. and want to let you know about that. We're going to have our baptismal service here uh, momentarily. And uh, so in just a minute, we're going to make our way outside. I know there's something I'm forgetting. Boy, I've got a terrible memory. Uh, something that I'm forgetting to announce or to let you know about. But I guess uh, we'll make ready for our baptism. We'll probably start that in about five minutes. And when we're outside, we'll give each of the teenagers a chance. We'll just ask them if they've trusted Jesus as their Savior. And they want to follow in, in uh, baptism. If they want to testify or tell anything about what God did in their life, uh, then they'll be free to do that. So we're going to do that in about just five minutes. Am I forgetting something, Mrs. Price? Okay, uh, just so the teenagers know, uh, there will be game time after, bab after the baptismal part of the service. And so if you have a change of clothes, uh, then you can change and play dry. If not, I hope you don't get the parking lot wet. Uh, so, uh, but the rain does it every day, so it'll probably be, be all right. So we're going to meet out there in just a minute, and we'll start the baptismal part of the service. So uh, if you're getting baptized tonight, uh, let's go ahead and get ourselves ready for that. And I'll meet you right outside here. Yeah, you may have noticed the baptismal pool right outside the door here. We'll meet out here momentarily. We're excited about this opportunity. Okay.